Hello, today we're going to look at an approach to fatigue. Please note that this video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before making any decision about your care. Fatigue is a very common complaint, so you should know how to properly assess the patient. Some things to consider right off the bat is the patient's age and gender. Why? Because certain etiologies are more common in certain demographics. For instance, a female of childbearing age may have fatigue due to anemia as a consequence of heavy menstrual bleeding, while a middle-aged male with anemia is more concerning of colon cancer. Some causes of fatigue may be due to biopsychosocial factors. When obtaining the patient's history, pay particular attention to their social history, their mood, their affect, which is their outward expression of their feelings and emotions. I found this acronym online. It uses the words fatigue to help you remember some of the most common differential diagnoses. For instance, F is for food intake, A, anemia, T, tumors and trauma, I, infections, G, generalized diseases, U, uremia and chronic kidney disease, E, for endocrine, and D, for depression and drugs. Let's look at some of the differential diagnoses. Particularly, what are some questions you should ask when screening for depression, abuse, STIs, alcohol abuse? When screening for depression, keep in mind the signs and symptoms. Observe the patient for psychomotor retardation, example, slowed speech and thought. Some questions you may ask are, how have you been feeling recently? Have you been feeling depressed? Did anything happen or change in your life in the recent months? Remember to ask about the support system. For instance, do you have any friends or family who you can talk to? You may suspect abuse. Sometimes figuring out how to word these questions to the patient may be challenging. It is, it is important that you reassure the patient that they are in a safe place and that you are there to help them. Some questions you may ask are, has anyone close to you ever threatened to hurt you emotionally or physically? Do you feel you're in danger at home? Has person X ever hit or threatened you? Does person X hurt anyone else at home? Do you have an emergency safety plan? Anemia is a very common cause of fatigue. There are many causes of anemia. Remember to ask about the patient's diet. Vegetarians tend to be B12 deficient. An elderly patient who eats toast every day may have nutritional deficiencies. Females in a reproductive age may have anemia due to a heavy menstrual cycle. If a male over 50 presents with anemia, be sure to ask if they've ever had a colonoscopy. Also consider past medical history. Does the patient have a chronic illness like IBD? or Crohn's disease, as these things can also cause anemia of chronic disease. Consider the patient's medications, as some drugs also cause anemia. And finally, the family history is also important. Looking at endocrine causes of fatigue, let's consider diabetes. You may ask questions like, have you noticed any urinary changes, increase in frequency in trips to the bathroom, increase in hunger, increase in thirst, weight changes. These simple questions can help you come up with a differential diagnosis. Hypothyroidism is another endocrine cause of fatigue. During history taking, remember to ask about weight changes, appetite changes. The patient may say that their appetite has decreased, but they're gaining weight. This response should make you start thinking of a thyroid issue. Screen further, ask questions about cold intolerance, skin changes, hair changes, bowel movement. These questions are so helpful in coming up with an appropriate diagnosis. Certain infections like HIV and hepatitis B can cause fatigue. You will need to ask the patient about their sexual history. Be sure to reassure the patient of the confidentiality of their answers before proceeding. You may say something like, I'd like to ask some more personal questions about your lifestyle and personal habits. Please be assured that everything you say will remain confidential. They are important for me to under better understand your overall health. Once you have the patient's permission, you may proceed to ask questions about their last menstrual cycle. 
Are they currently sexually active? Do they use any form of protection such as condoms? In the last six months, how many sexual partners have you had? Sexual preference. Do you have a history of sexually transmitted diseases? After you're done with taking the patient's history, it is time to move on to the physical exam. Before starting the physical exam, be sure to ask, is there anything else that you would like to tell me about? The patient may volunteer information that you may not even have thought to ask that might be very helpful. Always address the patient by their name and thank them for answering all of your questions. Ask the patient for permission before you begin your physical exam and remember to wash your hands before you start. When examining the patient's eyes, check for conjunctival paleness. This is a sign of anemia. If there's scleral icterus, start thinking of liver disorders and other causes of jaundice like hemolytic anemias. If there is oral trush, the patient may be immunocompromised. You should be considering HIV as a possible diagnosis. Mouth ulcers are common in lupus and lupus can cause anemia of chronic disease. During the neck exam, check for goiter. The presence may suggest a thyroid issue. Enlarged lymph nodes can be due to infection or even lymphoma. Inspect the abdomen for vascular signs like telangiectasias, which would suggest liver cirrhosis. Hepatosplenomegaly can be seen in infections, spherocytosis, as well as certain anemias. Look at the skin for changes, rashes, paleness, jaundice. During a neuro exam, if you find decreased deep tendon reflexes, a possible cause could be hypothyroidism. Finally, remember to assess the patient's mental status, the patient's appearance. Are they dressed appropriately? Do they have good hygiene? Their speech, the volume, the tone, the rate of their speech, their affect, is it flat? Is it appropriate? The thought process, is it linear? All these questions will help you come to an accurate diagnosis. After you've concluded the physical exam, you should have a list of differential diagnoses in mind. Use all the information you've gathered to help you decide which tests to order. Some tests that you may order are a CBC, an HbA1c, a TSH, ESR, or even a chest x-ray. Choose appropriate tests that will help you either to confirm your diagnosis or rule out certain diagnoses. This brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope this was helpful uh, to preparation of your exam and I wish you all the best. God bless you.